met kind of on a blind date. That blind date for Leanne and John Doherty was over 46 years ago. She would become a psychotherapist, and he would go on to be a leading neurologist in Knoxville, Tennessee. Passionate advocate for the diagnosis and treatment of those with dementia, as the head of Cole Neuroscience Center at the University of Tennessee Medical Center, Dr. John Doherty treated 30,000 patients over the years. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of the Lady Volunteers. Including iconic University of Tennessee women's basketball coach, Pat Summit. She was a wonderful, tough nut. I mean, she had her passion and uh, she, she lived it. John diagnosed Summit with Alzheimer's disease. I said, you know, I had something serious to tell you, to talk about, you know. I told her that I thought it was Alzheimer's disease. She said uh, she did too, that uh, she had a grandmother, I think it was, who had Alzheimer's disease. She said she's going to fight it, and she got all these books and pamphlets. I mean, she had a stack of books on her table about uh, uh, treatments for Alzheimer's disease and whatever she was determined. But <clears throat> she had pretty aggressive Alzheimer's disease. I mean, it got worse rather quickly. Pat Summit is the winningest coach in college basketball history. Pat Summit died in 2016. The Pat Summit Clinic is a milestone. John, who was on the board of the Pat Summit Foundation, helped to found the Pat Summit Alzheimer's Clinic at UT Medical Center. My mentor, Dr. Plum in, Plum in New York, used to say the most important uh, dementia that we deal with now is, uh, is um, um, the most important dementia that we deal with now is, is what, is the, the frontal dementias? Uh, yeah, let's go on. Today, at 75 years old, Dr. John Doherty is more than a year into his diagnosis of Lewy body dementia, the second most common form of dementia that impacts one and a half million Americans. By comparison, Alzheimer's disease impacts five and a half million Americans. I don't know whether I didn't want to deal with it or whatever at first. Leanne and I, you know, we, we taught, I mean, she, she knew the experience. I mean, she witnessed it. I mean, I've learned living with a neurologist, you notice the gait, you notice the movements. Um, it would be rare that we would go out to dinner that he wouldn't knock over something. I had a number of spells of falling out of bed. And I never, you know, what is this? And Leanne said, you know, whoa, that was a real fault. One time I hit my, the back of my head on a uh, night table. John's son, Andrew, gave speeches with him around the world about the diagnosis and treatment of dementia. Now he helps his dad navigate a conversation. And uh, I've had a very significant problem in, in terms of Lewy body disease of, um, of, uh, I've... Anxiety. Yeah, of anxiety. I, I tend to miss a few words as time goes on, but um, anxiety was a terrible problem for me. John is an ast astute clinician, you know, brilliant, wonderful person, and uh, had the insight to realize the types of symptoms he was having. Dr. Alan Levy, the chairman of neurology at Emory Brain Health, is Dr. Doherty's doctor. We can now t um, use special tests like PET scans or some blood tests or spinal fluid tests in Alzheimer's disease to determine if some of the pathology, the microscopic pathology is present. In Lewy body disease, we don't yet have those same tests. Lewy bodies are named for Dr. Friedrich Lewy, a German neurologist who in 1912 discovered abnormal protein deposits that disrupt the brain's normal functioning in people with Parkinson's disease. These protein deposits develop in nerve cells in the brain regions involved in thinking, memory, and movement. Lewy body and Parkinson's have many similarities. There are often some um, signs that resemble Parkinson's disease that are overlap with Parkinson's disease and the motor uh, features of Parkinson's disease. So for example, problems with gait and falls are very common in Lewy body disease as well. Sleep abnormalities are, we're learning, really one of the tip-offs. 
Up to 80% of people have hallucinations with Lewy body. Memory loss tends to be more common in early Alzheimer's than in early Lewy body dementia. Lewy body cannot be definitely diagnosed until autopsy. When it comes to his own condition, Dr. Doherty's expertise has not dimmed. There's a long period in which you're symptomatic, falling out of bed, or doing different things, and memory is still surprisingly good. That's because in, in Lewy body, you don't have that focal uh, abnormality of the hippocampus that's responsible for memory like you do in Alzheimer's disease. In normal Alzheimer's disease, hippocampus is involved and uh, the up other parts of the brain are not so involved. And in diffuse Lewy body disease, the pathology involves the frontal cortex, the autonomic system, the brain stem, so you get a lot of these um, uh, behavioral problems associated with it like um, agitation, depression. Specifics about what may have led the Oscar Louis Body has been in the news more in recent years because of prominent people diagnosed. Said Williams had Parkinson's disease, but a pathology report reveals he also suffered from Louis Body dementia. An autopsy showed beloved comedian Robin Williams, who committed suicide in 2014, had Louis Body. He launched CNN in 1980. And CNN founder Ted Turner revealed in 2018 he has Louis Body. Dr. John Doherty has walked thousands of families through the devastation of a dementia diagnosis, but there was no way to prepare for his own, even as a son who diagnosed his mother with Alzheimer's disease. His sister had it, too. It's hard to watch him be sad about those losses. Here's a man who used to control everything. I cried. I mean, that, that was tough. I remember going to work the next day and, 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 and struggling a little bit because he's this mentor for me for everything. This person who, when I walk down the streets in Knoxville, people come up to me and say, you know, how just amazing he is. And he's asking me, you know, what is the meaning of time? Why, why is 3 o'clock in the morning different than 6 o'clock in the I, morning? I can't tell time. Revered for his deep connection to his patients and their families, John Doherty worked tirelessly to remove the stigma that often accompanied a diagnosis. This is a photograph. He continues to do that now by sharing his own diagnosis and journey. It's not just loss. We still have meaning. We can still do help people. And that's what John and I have done all our life. We're both in the helping profession. So this is not exactly the way I imagined I'd be helping people. But it is what it is. And if we can keep that meaning, it, it inspires us. I think the main thing is to be in the moment. And that acceptance, the first noble truth is there is pain. There is pain, there will be pain, but you don't have to suffer. And if you resist the pain, that's suffering. First you cry, and you honor that. I mean, I have losses every day, I'm getting old. John and I make a better team. His past memory is better than mine, and my reason is better than his, so we're a pretty good team right now.